Welcome back to another episode of the Twilight Brigade. Well, our adventuring party, consisting of Sir Adir, Oliver, and Taldama, have been tasked with saving the land of Fadir from the goddess Shar and her werewolf-led army of the night. Ooh. After traveling to the city of Akith and meeting a number of interesting individuals and getting to pet an owl bear, much to the happiness of Sir Adir, uh, the heroes learned about Wolfsbane, a plant capable of poisoning the werewolves. They brought this information to the king and queen and have a few days left before the assault the assault on the castle of the Sanguine Saints. And that's where we left off, so let's jump right in. What would you all like to do? Were we going to go check on the keep before the assault? I think we had talked about it, for sure. Like having enough time to do that and then heading out from there. That's right, because I had gone to the dollhouse to give them some wolf spain in case they need it, and then my computer went to hell. Yep. Can I see the uh, the world map, Chuck? Absolutely. Um if you uh, compliments. Yeah, so we'll go to like the, the keep and then go here. Okay. Back, Ottom, to Ottom. Right? Back to Ottom. Back to Ottom, yeah. I think that was kind of the plan, because that's where it'll be marching from, the the bulk of it. I mean, obviously, there are some divisions already kind of out in those areas anyways, plus the eastern one is, is coming south, but... Yeah, that pretty much it. Uh, a large number of the forces, other than the ones that you were considering taking through the Fey Tree, are going to be marching from here. Now, I forget what you had decided on the Fey Tree, if you're sending a force through or not well we uh, we talked to the king about the whole situation and they were going to see if there were any volunteers so basically once we can, can meet up with the whole army there in Occam, we can see and if there are is there, there's volunteers that consider the risk worthwhile then maybe we'll do that otherwise we'll just march with the army well actually no, we'll probably go through the Feywild wild no matter what so are we going to teleport to the keep or are we going to go on a little jaunt flying down there's no teleport. There was no teleportation circle there. But um, we've been I, there, and you've seen trees, or touch trees. Right where they live in at the time. Roll me a nature check. At least, or at least living trees close enough. Nature. I am a druid, and I've got no bonus. I think I feel like druids should just have proficiency in nature. <laughs> yeah, I think class. The classes should give like one free proficiency per. Druids and rangers get nature. Paladins and clerics get religion. Um, Wizards, sorcerers, bards get arcana, mm -hmm. you know, like a knowledge check that comes with the class. Exactly. Because otherwise, it's kind of, uh, why would I be a, why, what kind of druid knows nothing about nature? A druid that knows everything about rocks. That's true. The stuff that nature grows on. Because you're a geologist. In my case, it makes more sense that I don't know anything about nature itself. Yeah. You're a geologist, not a biologist. An eight. There were trees along the a river that you had traveled on to get to the keep. However, any specific one is going to be kind of hard to remember. You can try. Uh, it might... It'll have a chance of failure. It's like a little bit of risking. A little bit of risk. Okay. So you're going to do teleportation via plants? Yeah. Let's transport via plants. Okay. Go ahead I'm and... Bonobus. Roll me a D100. 75. 75 is pretty good. <laughs> All right. You walk through the plant, the tree that you find that can easily handle all... Um, what are you? We, we've got the three of you, Barnabas and... Um, what's his name? Greg. Gregory. Greg. Greg. And, and, he, and but he, he can ride on my shoulder, so he's not really yeah. large. Yeah. You Don't forget Robert the Plant. Oh, yes. And Robert the Plant. Yeah. So... Robert the plant. There are six of you in total. And stepping through, you find yourself on the bank of a river overlooking the castle that was once known as Mora's Keep. Excellent work as usual. Ah, oh, well, thank you. Did you use the uh, the chart from the teleport spell? No. Oh, okay. As we discovered the other night, 74 is the, is the number <laughs> now. Uh, all right, so yeah, um, the keep 
as they're overlooking it, is fairly the same, uh, very large stone walls that surround a large tower. The biggest difference from when you last saw it to now is the general vicinity. Um, what once was bleak, dark skies, overcast, and a, a very somber dread feeling is now fairly bright and sunny. The clouds have parted, the grass is starting to regrow in many places, and the sound that was once a low drone of the moaning of hundreds of zombies is now the sound of uh, workers moving, uh, orders being shouted out, and a forge running. There are flames going up, and yeah, a lot of, a lot of movement. Not flames, smoke going up from a forge. As well. Looks exactly the same as when we left it. As you approach, the gate that you had entered in and um, talked to the two guards is currently being occupied by a single um, soldier, um, hand on their on the hilt of their sword. They're dressed in some basic leathers, and as you approach, they say. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, this is, uh, private land? What, uh, what business have you here? I, I am going to, um, Old Earth. I'm going to build a ramp that just kind of shifts him aside as we wa walk through the doors. I just say, we own the place. Oh, um, uh, all right, um, yeah, I, I've heard about you, um, Lady told Dama, um, okay, that was rude. As, as she walks through the door, Radir will walk up to him and uh, and be like, uh, don't mind her. She's she, a little bit of, you know, show, you're doing a great job, son. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm Sir Radir. Uh, this is Oliver. You obviously, uh, after the fact, recognized Alama, we're the Twilight Brigade, uh, here to check on how things are going. Uh, very, very well. Welcome, I guess, to your home. Um, uh, but, yeah, uh, construction's underway, as you can hear, and, you know, uh, I, welcome, I guess. I, I don't know. That was, a kind of a rude entrance, but I'm, I'm sure it's fine. Ah, uh, but it will be memorable. Okay, you have a point. Well, welcome. Um, I'm gonna go back to standing watch now. A, a chair for him pops out of the ground. Oh, well, thank you. Don't say anything. I just keep walking. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, you know, I'll thank him, and we'll then we'll go in. Yeah. So, as you enter, if you remember the the main gates were. Uh, barricaded off, and you had to go left into a tower um, to get to the top of the wall. Those gates have now been repaired, and you're able to walk directly into the courtyard. And looking around, um, roll me a perception check, everybody. Perception. Mm -mm. Damn it, where is it? Perception. I gotta pop out my all right, 25 and 21, and then a 5. So, Oliver, you're distracted with thoughts of the conversations that took place in Akith and some of the events that transpired there. And I have moved your minis appropriately, so now you're down here. Kyria, or Taldama and Radir, you find yourself looking over this large courtyard um, there is a pile of zombie corpses just kind of stacked one on top of another off to the left, and they're systematically getting burned, trying to clear up all of the zombie pieces that once inhabited this courtyard. Straight ahead towards the keep is where you can see now a fairly nice 
forge and blacksmith shop has been set up. There is next to that a stonemason kind of a quarry where people are hauling some heavy rocks and there's a person there directing the employees, I guess, for lack of a better term. Off to the right, you see a um, newly constructed shop or, or house of some kind and Taldama is able to get the smell of food coming from that house. Does it smell like they know what they're doing? It could be better, could be a lot worse. Not going to be winning any Michelin stars, but, um, you know, it'll do. Um, so do we recognize any of the people that are working? Because we sent, we had, or, yeah. No, as, as of this point, no. Okay, um, I guess we'll go into the house where the smell of food's coming from first. All right, so you approach the house building, not really sure what's inside, and, oh, there one curiosity. Okay, so as you walk into this um, actually very well-lit tavern, you see a group of individuals sitting around a table going over a set of documents of some kind. You see a variety of um, of races and ages here. You see a half-orc at the table who's, you know, very um, studiously looking over each of these documents. Next to him is a very familiar looking elf. Um, and you see a tabaxi monk. You see a human, a wood elf, and a tiefling at the table as well. And they're all kind of animatedly talking. Uh, the smell of food and stews uh, come over to your nostrils, filling your senses with the, again, not not stupendous food, but, you know, hearty and, and um, invigorating type meals. And looking in, you see the Fated Few and uh, Jane Dunwald, along with the half-work that you don't recognize. Is that the magnanimous many in the corner that I see? Oh, wait a second. What were you lot called? Taldama, welcome. Welcome home. Uh, yeah, I guess this would be home now, wouldn't it? And according to the paperwork, it is. We're here for a, a short time, but uh, we figured we'd stop in before we head back on our way and try to put an end to uh, all of the madness going on. <laughs> Jane looks at you and says, you better be stopping in to say hello to your mother. It'd probably be a good idea. I, you know, I figured that, you know, it's, it's a good idea to do that and, uh, you know. Uh, Respect your sure. mother who thought you were dead all that time. Yes, I'm aware, mother. It is. I'm sorry about that again, but, um, you know, kind of uh, thought that I'd, uh, it wouldn't be best for me to be uh, there. Yes, your self-isolation, understandable as it is, and, you know, you come around a little bit more often and stay a while, and, and we'll, we'll be back to the way things should have been for many years. I hope so. So, what have you three been up to on your adventures? We got to pet an owl bear, so that was pretty cool. Have you ever, have you ever pet an owl bear, uh, Mrs. Dunwald? Please, please call me Jane. No, I, I've hunted one or two in my time, but never thought to pet one. Did someone have one as a pet? I did. Okay. I, I couldn't I tell if it was fair or feathers that it had, but it Sarah Deer seemed to be uh, very impressed with it. He was he was very happy with it. Oh, since the last time we saw you, guess what we did hunt speaking of hunting creatures what did you do we killed a hydra and the fey wild we did do that you just watch as like the entire faded few are you know jesper and mordai are just taking notes and scribbling down as much as they can hey jesper and mordai if you're, as long as you're taking notes take note of this it started off with five heads, 
and by the time we ended it, I believe we were, I believe there were 11 skulls in total that we ended up with, right? Oliver? There were so many heads that it was really hard to keep track of, but there were a lot of heads at the end there, yes. Just, I, tell us everything, tell us all the details, we'll start writing a song right away. And I give him all the details of our times in the Feywild. Meeting the Lord of the Hunt, um, our time with Sial, who was very angry for some reason. You wouldn't think that a tiny body could hold that much anger, but it really can. You'd be surprised. Well, when it's fueled by, uh, what was it, Oliver? What was it that made him so angry? <laughs> you just look over and you see Ravdeer, cross-armed, tapping his foot, just dance there. I drew a couple cards and uh, somebody doesn't like me and uh, we got it fixed, but... If, uh, cards from what? A cursed deck of cards. Really, I mean, that's that is the the gist of it. A little bit zany, but um, potentially uh, beneficial. And, and for now, the most part, it was beneficial, if I say so. But and now we've been um, we've been the gods have been following us. Well, mainly Oliver. I think the deck had something to do with that. That was part of the start of it, I think. So yeah, it was um, it's been quite the adventure. Mr. Mordai. The uh, half work has been just kind of studying designs and plans at this point. Um, pipes up and says, uh, <clears throat> Well, if you've had enough uh, time sharing stories and distracting the helpers that you invited, it's time they get to work and, you know, earn their keep around here. Are you saying that, are you talking to the people who own this place that they're not allowed to talk to the helpers? I'm telling the owners that if they want to get done in their home in a timely manner, they should have those helping get back to work. You know I what? I suppose we, we could potentially help a little bit too. We could, we could. And I'll tell you what, mister. No. What do I call you? Longtooth. Garvin Mr. Longtooth. Mr. Longtooth. If there are orders to be given out, then I suggest that maybe you can march yourself over to Hayfield and you can take care of the werewolf problem for us. And we'll be here happy to help around the keep. I'm not much of a fighter, but I do know how to get a job done. And I was hired to get this job done for you. And I appreciate that. Wouldn't want you uh, not having a place to lay your head. Shall we get to work then? Absolutely. And he lays out the papers that he's been studying and says, uh, you know, here's the designs that we've been going off of. And now that you're here, you can take a look and you know, request any changes that you might want to make. This is your home after all. Oliver, what does it look like? I'll describe it. Yeah. What um, it looks like. So it, it's your basic keep. There's a lot of, um, there, there's a nice little area for you know, a settlement inside the walls. Uh, and he goes through about, you know, the the more mercantile areas of this keep adding on to the more residential areas that could be expanded outside of the walls if you wanted to let people settle around the area. Goes through kind of where the blacksmith is, where the different aspects of the keep would be. The stables, the um, the the keep itself, the tower itself. Um, asks if you want to convert the dungeon into more of a storage area or a training area, or if you want to leave it as a a dungeon. Um, goes through I, all of that. Can we? Okay, hear me out here. As far as a dungeon goes, can it be a place that like adventurers go in and then they have to try to, I don't know, beat whatever's in there so they can escape, like a dungeon? You want to turn the functional dungeon into a training dungeon? Into an adventuring dungeon. Yeah, like a training. Yeah. yeah. Might, might might take some time, but I mean, yeah, we could do that. And people might pay to like to come in and see and test their metal against it. See how quickly they can get through it. But on the other side, we also want this to be a place where adventurers can gather. So it could be a place for them to just, you know, hone their skills. In the dungeon. Yeah, yeah, we can make that. 
How high is that on the priority? Because you do still have a hole in your oh, the roof. Let's make everything livable first, and then we can worry about that kind of stuff. Okay. We might need a few more stone masons to help with that. Oh, I believe I can take care of a lot of that. We have a few well, stone masons as well coming down, I believe. <laughs> your friends, Tolama, to are they uh, the on their way down? The are the dwarves here yet? No, it has been a day. They're um, they're they're probably around here somewhere. Oh, they're not. They're not even at the capital yet. Oh. No. I forgot about how <laughs> mere mortals can travel. Uh, goes through kind of the, the the plans and everything with you, and then, so we've got a a, a team here uh, assembled. If you would like to meet them, otherwise, uh, yeah, you're free to help out wherever you feel like you can lend a hand and. We'll keep working. And with that, thank you so much for watching. If you made it through this entire episode, go get yourself a popsicle. You've earned it. Um, Don't tell him to do that. <laughs> and make sure you do all the things. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out our, um, our Teespring. Go buy a shirt, people. Or a mug. Or any of the other stuff we've got. We've got good stuff. You want no, the, the stuff. No. Oh. And as always, may you roll those nat twenties, avoid those critical fails, and have a good night. Bye. Bye.